Hi friends. You know, some things are really nice to have. I like my Jeep, I like my Monaco motorhome, I like my BMW at home in Mexico. Other things are essential. Not just nice to have, but absolutely essential. And at the very top of that list, I would put clean, healthy drinking water. And that is what I'm gonna get out of this box today. This is the ITL water purifier. It's a reverse osmosis uh, portable water filter. And uh, I've been wanting one of these for a while for my RV. I have some other filters. I'm gonna show you those in a minute. But uh, let's see what we got in the box here. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. ITL, I T E H I L. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. ITL. Nice packing, you know. <laughs> I'm going to put that underneath my water pump. A little extra padding for keep it quiet. Owner's manual. There it is, the portable reverse osmosis water machine. Nice carrying handle. And a box full of accessories. Uh, the filters, there's a hybrid filter for getting out the big stuff and the dirty stuff, and an RO filter for really making it pure water. That must be a wrench. Yeah, a wrench to help put the filters in and out of the thing. The filters, filters go in here. We'll be doing all of that. And what's this? Oh, a carrying case for the tubes. Oop, dropped the power cable. You can charge this with a solar panel. Um, you can plug it into 12 volts. You can plug it into 120 volts AC. Oh, something else in the box. What's this? Nice little velvet case. Another power cable. Oh, it's the it's the uh, 110 volt adapter with uh, USB A, USB C, and the cable. You know, sometimes you can tell about the quality of a company you're dealing with by little things. Packing, of course, and I'm not talking about this nice velvet case. I'm talking about this. A nice little Velcro that keeps it wrapped up, but the little things, ITL. You just know that you're dealing with a company that uh, cares about their name. And what else do we have here? A solar panel to charge it because it truly is portable. Well, that's looking nice. Wow, check this out the solar panel. Teal. Couple of solar panels. Oh, it's not a couple of solar panels. It's four solar panels for a hundred watts. And what's back here?
uh, the charging cable, charge controller, I assume, some uh, snap rings. What would those be for? Oh, I'll bet you to put on these uh, grommets and hang it up. Yeah, that's good. And this, wow. Used for the ITL portable power station. <laughs> every, every kind of connection you can imagine. Wow. Well, I'm going to hook all of this up and get it charged. And uh, we'll be talking some more about it soon. I have it charging. I had the water filter out here on the table, but... Dummy me, it was shading <laughs> the solar panels. So I put it around here. You can see the red light going there, blinking. It's uh, charging. We'll be making pure water soon. Well, I'm back to trying to understand today how a portable reverse osmosis water purifier really works. So I've been doing some research, and I'm not doing it just to make a video. I'm doing it because I'm the guy that's going to drink the water out of that thing. Well, first of all, I looked up. I wanted to understand the relative size between a water molecule and viruses and bacteria. Because reverse osmosis is a, a very, very small filter that only has holes in it the size of a water molecule, so pressure pushes water molecules through by osmosis, and it doesn't let bigger things through. So how big is a virus? How big is a bacteria? How big is a water molecule? A water molecule is 0.3 nanometers in size. Viruses are from 20 nanometers to 400 nanometers, and bacteria is around 400 nanometers in size. That didn't mean anything to me. Brain doesn't go for nanometers. I just, it means nothing. So I'm trying to calculate this into some real world understandable things, and I came up with this. This is a golf ball. Let's assume that it's a water molecule. And I did all of this math. A golf ball is 1.68 inches in diameter. So how big compared to a golf ball would the smallest virus be? Virus compared to our water molecule. 9 feet. Water molecule, smallest virus. The largest virus and most bacteria is 400 nanometers. Well, that doesn't mean anything to me either. How big is 400 nanometers compared to our water molecule golf ball? 400 nanometer viruses and bacterias are the size compared to my golf ball water molecule of four and a half 40 foot motorhomes. And that's why viruses and bacteria can't fit through a reverse osmosis filter only big enough for a water molecule. I have this filter, I think it's 10 microns and it just takes out sand and sediment and stuff. Everything that goes into my big fresh water tank goes through that filter. A micron is a thousand times bigger than a nanometer, so Pretty simple math. Uh, 10 microns is 10,000 nanometers. So a 400 nanometer sized virus or bacteria has no trouble going through a 10,000 nanometer hole. Matter of fact, 25 of them could go through that hole at the same time. Wound up with a cold rainy day here. Uh, got it all charged up the other day. Gonna put it together and uh, make some water. <laughs> no, we're not gonna make water. We're gonna purify water. Oh, I figured out this. This is not just a carrying case. It's also a backpack. You can 
We call it portable, yeah. Carry it, carry it wherever you're going when you're hiking. So we're gonna put the filters in. They go in here, two of them. The hybrid filter and the RO filter. And we have this handy dandy wrench to help. So there's a little mark on here. Hybrid RO. There's an unlocked padlock and a locked padlock. Pretty easy to figure out. And then the wrench. Push down fairly hard and turn the little mark over to the locked padlock. Easy peasy. The wrench really helped. On this end, this says drinking water on there, and it says drinking water there. So pinch these two things, clicks right in there. On the back side, actually maybe we should call this the front side since that's where the water goes in. Has a little rubber protective cap. This is the intake hose and it's a threaded thing. There's a rubber gasket in there. You don't need any Teflon tape or anything. It's a compression fitting. Once you get it started, you just have to rotate the whole thing to screw it in. And Finger tight should be good with that rubber gasket in there. You don't need a wrench. There we go. We are ready to go find some water we don't want to drink <laughs> until we run it through a water purifier. Before we do the purification test, the manual says to run it 10 minutes to fill up and flush out the filters before you use it. That's what we're doing here for 10 minutes. I'm doing a little experiment while I'm doing the 10 minute run to start it. Uh, I've got a two cup measuring cup there and a reservoir to catch the water you're going to use for something other than drinking. That's my fresh water. Well, I don't know how fresh it is. It came out of my RV tank. Anyway, I'm timing this and we'll see what two cups to the other water that's not going to be used for drinking what the ratio is and I'll let you know and I'll let you know how long it took to make two cups of good water. And there's our two cups of purified water. Hey Google, well, how much time on the stopwatch? It's at two minutes and 41 seconds and counting. So a minute 20 seconds to make one cup of water. Seems pretty fast to me. And the ratio of about 1.3 to 1 for the rejected water versus the pure water. Why am I interested in that? I'm thinking about installing it underneath my sink and then using a separate faucet like this one for the reverse osmosis purified water and running the rejected water back into my fresh water tank. I have a 100 gallon fresh water tank. And that lasts me about two weeks when I'm boondocking. This is basically the same technology they used on the space station where they recycle all of their water use, uh, including uh, their sweat, their condensation from their breath, and their urine. Now, I'm not going to recycle my urine and my shower water, <laughs> but... Pumping the uh, rejected water back into my fresh water tank seems like um, a conservative way to not waste water and it's not going to be a problem. I'll have uh, pure water for two weeks at a time, no problem. And then I'll hook it up to this faucet. This faucet goes through a filter that I have under the sink down here, but it's not filtered to the extent of reverse osmosis. Even when I'm in quartzite and using that filter, I still can taste the difference in my coffee. I'm looking forward to good coffee, even when I'm in quartzite or other places in Arizona where the water is not very good tasting. What did you say? Oh, I'm going to be in it.
No, you're not. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Silly Billy. <laughs> well, I found some water I would not drink. This is our rainwater catchment tank. It's 1,200 gallons, and when we bought the ranch three years ago, it was already half full of water. So, who knows what lurks below. Well, it's been running about five minutes, so I'm pretty sure that what's coming out of over there is coming out of here. The deer and the javelina, they come and drink out of this every day. I'm sure uh, there's definitely things in there you don't want to drink. But it looks pretty good coming out of here. Okay. The moment of truth. Do I really believe this? Tastes like water. I'll let you know in three days. <laughs> Hi friends. So why do I have the confidence to risk my health, maybe even my life, by drinking water out of the rain catchment tank? <laughs> because I've done my research. And my first research was to really try to understand how Reverse osmosis works, and my demonstration with the golf ball and the tape measure, I hope, uh, helped you understand it as it helped me. Um, as I studied reverse osmosis, I ran into some controversy. There are old wives' tales that say you shouldn't drink uh, reverse osmosis water because it takes the minerals out of the water and it'll leach the minerals right out of your bones. Well, that's been debunked, and the World Health Organization doesn't agree. And doctors say that you don't—you're not getting your minerals out of the water if you're having a healthy diet. You're getting it out of your food. But the biggest revelation with regard to do I want to drink reverse osmosis water or not? Let's call it RO water now. Do I want to drink RO water? The biggest revelation was. I'm already drinking it. Hey Google, what bottled water companies use reverse osmosis? On the website MerlsWater.com, they say, reverse osmosis is a water treatment technology most commonly known for its use in the purification of drinking water. It is likely you have consumed reverse osmosis water under the recognized brands Aquafina, Dasani, Nestle Pure Life and Smart Water. It's also a certainty if you've ever used a water kiosk in front of a Safeway store or out there in Quartzite, you've already consumed reverse osmosis water. Well, that's all well and fine and speaks to the fact that uh, we are drinking RO water already and it's okay. But it doesn't say anything about the viability of the ITL RO water purifier. It's portable. It has a built-in battery, a self-priming pump, double-activated carbon and reverse osmosis membranes that remove bacteria, viruses, parasites, heavy metals, polyvinyl chloride, and more. But I don't believe all the marketing that I read. It has a whole bunch of certifications, and I read these. It says, tested and certified past the certification of various authoritative organizations and obtained certificates such as the FCC, FDA, CE, EMC, PSE, ROSH, etc. Safe and reliable. You can think of it as worry-free. Well, a lot of letters. I didn't know what those all meant, and I wanted to know, so I looked them up. 
start with the FCC, that's the Federal Trade Commission in the United States. I do not understand why you need the Federal Trade Commission to approve a water filter, but apparently it doesn't give off any radio waves that we have to worry about. The next one, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, of course, you'd like to know that the Food and Drug Administration in the United States approved this as a source of drinking water. The next one didn't mean anything to me either, European Commission. Turns out it's uh, quite impressive and quite important. The letters CE appear on products traded in the extended single market in the European Economic Area, the EEA. They, signific they signify that the products sold in the EEA have been assessed to meet high standards of safety, health, and environmental protection requirements. CE. It's got a CE rating. So, safe in Europe. PSE Roche. Roche is the, um, stands, R-O-S-H, stands for the Restriction of the Use of Hazardous Materials. Doesn't have any hazardous materials in it. Uh, found this one very interesting. It has an EMC rating. Electromagnetic Compatibility. Now, if you're a prepper, and the way the world's going these days, maybe we should be, uh, this might be important. If there's a nuclear attack, your ITIL reverse osmosis water machine will not be affected by the electromagnetic pulse. You know, it's not something that I've worried about on a daily basis since I was in grade school in the 1950s and they made us crawl under our desk, put our heads between our knees, just in case there was a nuclear attack. They called it duck and cover. <laughs> yes, they really did that in grade schools in the 1950s. The, and the last one here is the SGS, which is the Society General Surveillance. It's the world's leading testing and certifying company for chemical analysis. And the SGS is recognized and accredited by OSHA in the USA. These are some of the things that give me confidence that the ITIL RO water purifier is the real deal. Links below if you want to live a long life. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up, and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.